Do niche fragrances suck? Now I know there are many of you watching this video that have yet to take a dive into true niche perfumery. And I understand why, because I was just like you. I was turned away by niche fragrances for three main reasons, and maybe you can relate to this. Number one, I thought I wouldn't like them. Number two, they can be expensive. And number three, and this is probably the most important, I wasn't sure if other people would like them on me. I was wearing fragrances to smell good. That's it. Now, if your sole purpose with fragrances is to smell good, then please pause this video, watch this video, and then come back, of course. I avoided any video on YouTube dealing with niche fragrances for almost two years. I did not give any of them a chance for the aforementioned reasons. However, regardless of this fragrance hobby that I've been chasing for years now, as I've matured, I've learned this very important and universal lesson. It is easy to get good things now, but great things are worth waiting for. Now you can take that in a number of ways and this video is not really about that. As soon as I started to dip my toe into Lake Nishinoka. What? Sounded better in my head, I think. I immediately realized what I'd been missing. Smelling clean or playful will never go out of style. But there's something about smelling like nothing anyone has ever smelled before. There's something special to that. It's elevating. Now, in the past, I've said some pretty harsh words about some of the most crowned niche fragrances in the YouTube community. And I stand by what I have said. Now, to avoid starting a war like I've done in the past, I'm not going to mention any particular names of fragrances or brands, but I believe some obvious names might already be coming to mind for you. Today, these unmentioned fragrances are luxury fragrances with mainstream appeal more than they are truly niche. The most niche attribute about many of them is their retail price. Not saying this is inherently bad, but let's be real. There are plenty of amazing brands out there that get overshadowed because they value giving their customers innovative products with multi-dimensional substance and depth. It's not just about a great smelling scent that everyone's gonna like. They're actually trying to tell stories, paint pictures. It's art is at the heart of it. And the reality is, is that a lot of these brands I'm referring to sell their fragrances for less than a lot of these very popular luxury brands that produce these luxury mainstream products that are often labeled or mislabeled niche. So money's not really the thing here. We can't make that the excuse. And I have 10 fragrances I'll be talking about here in a second that go along with what I'm talking about. 10 great niche fragrances that are cheaper than a lot of these super popular ones. Not all of them, but many of them. Now I want to be clear here. There are several fragrances from some of these unmentioned brands that I truly love and I find it actually be niche as they should be because they claim to be. They interest me and I love them and I wear them all the time and I talk about them on this channel. So don't think that this video is simply about crapping on certain brands that, again, I still have yet to mention, but I'm not going to. All I wanna do with this video is highlight some amazing fragrances, niche fragrances to be exact, that are truly niche, in my opinion, that are probably not on your radar. And I just implore you to sample them. Pick one that sounds interesting, get a sample you might be surprised. That's what it took for me. I just decided, you know what, let me go ahead and get a sample. And the first fragrance I ever did that with is on this list. We'll get to that in a second. The best part about all these fragrances is that as far as I could find, they all retail for under $200. If you did want to get a bottle, it's not that far out of reach and it's definitely, again, cheaper than some of these other fragrances we're already drooling over. Now, one more thing. If you go looking for bad reviews on any of these fragrances, you will find them online just like you'll find bad things said about anything ever including mother Teresa. that's just the internet keep that in mind let's dive right into the list this is a no particular order first fragrance up is coming from an italian house that i am still getting to know this is one fragrance that i was sent by my good friends at fragrapedia house a great u.s based fragrance distributor of niche fragrances that 
you may not have heard of or tried. We've talked about them at least once or twice before. They've sent me over a new fragrance for me to discover and get to know, and I'm loving it. It's my scent of the day. This is coming from Farmacia SS Annunziata. Not exactly sure. 1561 from Florence, Italy. This is called Whiskey Nobile. This is an odd scent. Very, very boozy. Very, very much smells like whiskey, but with cacao. A dry, powdery, chocolatey cacao. It's warm, it's spicy, there's some coffee in there, a little bit of smoky incense, some vanilla, oud, leather. It's such a rich, dense fragrance without being overbearing, overwhelming, and it also smells utterly unique. Now I will say this, if you spray this on your hand and smell it up close, or if you smell it straight from the atomizer, it might smell like grape to you. Some kind of grape candy, which is strange, I will admit it, but the full wearing is where it counts and that is where the fragrance truly comes to life. I'm getting this beautifully dusty, chocolatey cacao with a nice wet booziness behind it with a creamy woodiness underneath, a little sweet as well. Beautiful stuff, very warming. For me, it's long lasting. I've been enjoying it for several hours now and it smells so elegant, so wonderful, perfectly unisex. This is definitely one to check out. We do have a code with Fragrapedia House. Use the code LUX2022, save you some money. I'm gonna have all details down below in the description. Do check this out, Whiskey Nobile. This fragrance you can easily find for under $100. Amazing quality, beautiful scent. Technically not the most original, but it actually gets a pass and you'll see why. From Essential Parfum, this is called Bois Imperial. Fresh, light woodiness, a little dry, but mostly fresh. Maybe a little bit of a green herbal quality. I think there's some basil in here. A little spicy, ultimately a clean woody scent. Great quality, not the most complex, but a little different. However, it is known to resemble Ganymede from Marc Antoine Barrois, and I have to agree with that. Except it does not have that sharp, minerally metallic feel and that curry-like immortelle that Ganymede has, and they are produced by the same perfumer. This came after Ganymede, so I assume that Essential Parfum approached Quentin Biche, the perfumer, and said, hey, we love what you did with Ganymede. Can you give us a little something similar in Bois Imperial? And he delivered. This is a more accessible take on that type of profile. They're not identical, but you can tell that they're related. Bois Imperial, totally worth a sample. If you're looking for a clean, easy to wear, versatile, but a little different woody fragrance. Here's a fragrance I'm still getting to know. I just wore this yesterday for the first time and I was loving it. This is a total classic. This might be a bit mature for some. It came out in 1978. From Cajon, we have Yatagan. A really, really special fragrance. Hard to describe. Again, I'm still getting to know it. There's this musky, mossy woodiness, a little funky with castorium, but it's done so tastefully, it does not overtly smell nasty and stinky. It just has this slightly intriguing musky edge that smells very natural, almost like human in a way. I get a little bit of this ambery warmth. It's a little sweet. Some people don't really claim sweetness. I get a little bit of an almost resinous sweetness on my skin. It's very cozy, but still very classy. More to come on this as I get to know it better, but total classic, it speaks for itself. Doesn't need me. That is Yatagan Eau de Toilette from Cajon. Up next is the fragrance I referenced earlier, the first niche fragrance I ever went out on a limb. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. I wasn't sure if I would be able to wear it readily or if it would be something that I could easily find a function for in my daily life, but I got a sample of it. I loved that sample for maybe less than a year. Kept coming back to it over and over, loved it more and more, ended up getting a bottle a few years back, and I, it's been a staple on my channel for years now, ever since. Dolce Di Giorno from Bois 1920. This stuff is lovely. My wife is actually wearing it today. She wore it before she went to work. I got a whiff and immediately recognized it warm spicy cinnamon and it's so natural such a natural cinnamon almost like cinnamon sticks from the jar with plum juicy and sweet with some vanilla with a lot of cedar wood so quite dry and woody and even a little bit of nagramatha which has a bit of this old aged woody vibe to it ultimately cozy smelling 
kind of elegant, but could also be pretty casual and pretty different. People say it smells like Costume National Ohm. Haven't smelled that one yet. I hear they're pretty close, and I think that came first, but I also hear that they do have some distinct differences. So whatever it may be, this stuff is worth sampling, and this is a fantastic house. They have a lot of other fantastic offerings. Dolce di Giorno, the green juice. That is not what it translates to in Italian. All righty. I'm kind of lumping indie and niche here in the same category. I'm looking for fragrances that are artistic and that are trying to create a composition that has distinction, that has definitiveness, and that has an identity. And they're not trying to ride a trend. So, you know, that is a conversation for another time. But nonetheless, this is from a small little brand up in Montreal. This is called Mont Sillage. And this fragrance is called Aviation Club. I've talked about this several times. A beautiful, very unique tobacco fragrance. Tobacco, maybe a little bit of whiskey, coffee, but these metallic and green notes that make it fresh and kind of green and watery, but still warm, a little bit sweet and a little bit rich, and it, it just has a nice depth to it. Ultimately, kind of simple, doesn't change all that much, but for what it is, it smells like nothing I've ever smelled before, and it is incredibly wearable. It wears a little bit light, but it's not weak. So I have particular use for this. I wear it maybe during the day when I don't need it for very long, or I wear it at night at the end of the day after having worn something else that may have worn off and knowing that it'll be gone by the morning. Lighter, weaker fragrances, however you want to call it, do have a place in my opinion. That is Mont Sillage Aviation Club. I cannot say this name in French correctly, so I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to try it because I'm going to butcher it. I cannot say it for some reason, but it translates to the orchestra in French. This is a great house. Obviously, all of their fragrances are centered and focused around music and the orchestra, but not just the symphonic orchestra, other aspects of music as well. This one is called Te Darbukia, which is actually tea, like Darbuka tea or something like that. It looks like the, but it's French. Which I know so well, as I just said. Lovely, very unique fragrance, kind of like this balsamic cacao we have cacao coming back here dry dusty chocolatey but kind of airy instancy in a way maybe a little bit woody it wears pretty dark but also very comforting it smells like nothing i've smelled before i absolutely love it it lasts a good little while on my skin i've enjoyed it for all day wear several times and it's just something that keeps my interest throughout the day this whole house is definitely worth checking out get some samples if you can again gonna have them linked down below all right, from Manos Gerakinis, a Greek house. This is Immortel. Not everyone's favorite note, but it's done so well here. Mixed with this resinous brown sugary feel. It's more of a maple-like Immortel with brown sugar. Very warm, very spicy, even a little bit creamy from milk. I believe it has a milk accord in the heart, maybe even some sandalwood in the base that helps it be a little bit more creamy and smooth. Smells delicious. It actually smells a little bit edible, kind of mouth-watering, very cozy smelling, but also a little bit powerful. So don't overspray this stuff. It is no slouch, lovely. Maybe get a discovery set or just get a sample of this. I'll have links down below. Immortel, tasty stuff, really good. This house is a little bit more well-known than maybe some of the others I talked about, but still overshadowed by other things. This is Egypt from Maiden Bob. Probably one of the more popular fragrances. This one came to me from my friends at Scent City. I'm gonna have a link down below where you can check them out. I love this little 30 ml bottle because it's not a lot. I can go through this. I actually have a chance of finishing this if I really put the hammer down and tried, but. I'm not trying because I have a bunch of stuff to wear. Lovely take on a fougere, kind of a warm, spicy, cozy take on an otherwise kind of clean smelling barbershop style scent. That's just what I get from it. Has an, this kind of exotic arid quality to it, almost like desert air, as you might imagine by the name. A little sweet and warm spicy, but still kind of fresh, clean, creamy in a way. Incredible fragrance, very captivating, but also very functional. Egypt. From the house of Nobile 1942, this one is called Ponte Vecchio. And this is kind of a clean, easy to wear, daily fragrance that smells like nothing else out there. You have this combination of vetiver, so woody, but a clean vetiver with geranium, 
which makes it a little minty fresh, as well as iris. And the iris here is a little bit powdery, but not overly so. Ultimately, it smells kind of green, woody, clean, fresh, minty, a little soft and floral, but still has a lot going on, maybe even some citrus when you first spray it on. Kind of almost a classic Italian cologne style fragrance, but with much more going on than that. Really interesting stuff. I enjoy it for the summer and springtime. Ponte Vecchio from Nobile 1942. And the last fragrance of this video is one of the newest from the house of Sarah Baker. This one did not get glowing first impressions from my wife, at least up close on paper. I recommend putting this on skin and not smelling it up close because it does have a quality to it that can be off-putting to some if you're not used to real oud. This is called Gold Spot. This is a lovely fragrance. I've given it a full wearing. I didn't love it at first spray again like that, which I don't recommend making your final assessments with. I gave it a full wearing one night to a performance and I was loving the wafts I was getting. Butterscotch Oud. There's like a sweet, delicious, creamy, smooth quality. But then there's this slightly funky woodiness down there that adds some edge that makes it more than just a gourmand, that gives it some depth. Very interesting, very unique. More to come as I get to know this better. I would definitely dress this up. This is more of a classy, elegant style fragrance. Borderline show-stopping, not as much as Charade, which is another fragrance I have from them that is very, very powerful and very, very polarizing. It's a great balance of interest with wearability. If you like ooh. That is Sarah Baker, Gold Spot. All right, that's it for me. I wanna know what you think of this idea. If you have aversion to niche fragrances, I wanna use this comment section as a place where you can safely state your concerns. Let's start a discussion, let's talk about it. I'm curious where you guys are at in your journey. I'm curious if you have avoided niche fragrances, what is your reasoning behind it? Is it any of the ones I discussed early in the video or is there any that I didn't mention? Because this world of niche fragrances is so vast, it really has changed my life. Once I started getting into it and realizing what was possible with fragrance, I wouldn't say it turns you into a snob, but it makes it hard to go back to the simple. And I do appreciate the simple. I have a lot of simple fragrances back there that I love to wear on occasion, but most days I'm looking for something interesting and not just something to blend in because life is too short to blend in. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.